very well. Let us begin. So my name is Devon Matthews, hometown Mount Vernon, New York. I'm 28. I'm a professional Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links player. Uh, me right now, I work at Best Buy. I'm a computer supervisor there. PlayStation, <laughs> I gotta go with the PlayStation 4. Xbox One, definitely. Wake up, wash up, take a shower, uh, suit up to be the best darn associate at Best Buy I could be. And then when I get home, just no life Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links until I pass out. Devon's room and how he games isn't really necessarily about his room. Everything that he collects is a reflection of himself. And it actually goes beyond this room into his ideas, his philosophies. I actually learned a lot with this opportunity to get to know him. And I hope you do too. I'm just gonna let him describe everything else for, for himself. I'm in a fraternity. Kai Theta Sigma fraternity, uh, multiculturalist, blah, 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 blah. Kai Theta Sigma Multicultural Fraternity Incorporated. Jesus, if they heard that. Um, also a Mason, just the first degree though. I still have to go through my other paths of Masonry. It's about making the right decisions, about being there for your fellow man or woman. We're, we're here to be men of light. I, I was just going for the kind of like look you kind of get out of walking into your favorite arcade store. Like you kind of walk around, you walk into an old school vintage like 90s game store, you'll look up first. First thing you do is look up and you're like, oh, you can tell my personality just from looking at the room. The room is bright and vibrant, and full of color, nowhere near done in gaming. That's, that's a never ending journey. Yeah. I consider myself a competitive gamer. Play ga I do play games casually, but I play it with the intent of getting better. And I feel like that's the real definition of a competitive player. You play it with the intent to be better tomorrow. You'll know when somebody's competitive when they hate something too easy. Because I'm not going to learn anything. I pick up this bad boy and go to work. I usually sit right here on the foot of the bed and, <laughs> and literally just do my thing. As long as the controller works and it can charge and the game works, we go there. There was even a point when I played shooters, I would point put a piece of tape in the middle of the cursor. So like that one piece of tape is where the head is always going to fall. The most I ever upgraded from this was a fight stick. And that's a learning curve all on its own if you didn't grow up in arcades. One of the biggest things is just being able to listen. And when I say listen to people, I mean don't listen just to respond, listen to understand. Uh, there's a huge difference between the two. I feel like both of them get misconstrued a lot. Um, you have to remember you're human. Everybody's human. You know, don't let the disagreements or don't let the woes and the troubles of today affect your relationships or affect your opportunities tomorrow. And I always like to tell people, head up, feet forward. Keep going. Don't quit. I think I was around like maybe four or five and my aunt was going to college. She used to play Super Nintendo in my grandmother's house, right on the living room. One day I just walked in seeing her play Super Mario World and I'm just like, oh wow, that's so, so cool. It's in color and I see a little guy with a red hat jumping on things and killing things. I'm just like, oh wow. And then the green dinosaur comes up and it's Yoshi. And here's the second controller. And then when I started playing, I was at first upset that I was the green guy. And then my aunt was like, oh, don't worry, they're the same character. And I didn't understand that logic back then. Uh, Super Mario World. Even to this day, I still play it with my sister. The first real console I had was a PlayStation. I'll never forget like the joy I got when I saw that thing for Christmas. When I played that, and I played Crash Bandicoot, and that's when I played Tekken for the first time, and I was just like, Sony has my attention. The, the first system I ever wanted was the Game Boy Color. It was the Game Boy Color. I was so tired of seeing things in gray. Thank you for color and technology and innovation. I said it without much thought, but the, the paddle is my frat brother that actually does live around the corner. It's his. He probably will never get it back because it's too cool. Uh, I played sports heavy growing up. The trophies and everything were just kind of aligned there when I first came here. Yeah, I used to, there used a pizza shop over here on uh, Gramerson Avenue that used to have Marvel vs. Capcom in it. And it used to have Soul Calibur. And the minute I played Marvel vs. Capcom, I was like, this is amazing. Yeah, Mega Man and Spider-Man in the same game? I gotta play now, and I would play, and I found out the Shadow Lady cheats, and how to get crazy triple supers, and all this, it was it was so good. Arcades teach you a lot. I could do this just like this, but it'll look like I have an attitude, but I'm actually in the best moods ever, and you would never know, because I don't have a smile on my face. But then, you put a smile back on, and now all of a sudden all the personality and energy comes out. So, guys, smile, laugh more, please. It's, it's one of the greatest remedies, and honestly, it could change all your interactions in the day if you just hold a little smirk and then smile when you talk. I smile when I talk, but I look pissed when I'm just standing still, so trust me, I understand. I wanna say the original Xbox, 
mainly because of Xbox Live and what Xbox Live did for that time period. That's when Halo came out and you were able to do LAN battles on the first Halo and then Halo 2 came out and that brought the online multiplayer and that's when Xbox Live became so popping. Everybody was like, hey, we love PlayStation, what are you guys gonna do? The Xbox, the original Xbox is most iconic in my opinion. So this area is generally the main stage for my gaming. This is just like my fake office. Like you can't mess with this. This is just me, everything. My PlayStation, my Xbox, cable box. Everything here holds significance to me. I can notice if one Amiibo is missing. The only thing I wish I had is a little more space for Amiibos so I could just take them from different areas of my room and just put them here. The goal is to get a big enough stand to support all of them so it just looks like one big panorama of Amiibos. I like the PlayStation. I thought I would have issues playing a game like Destiny on and I don't anymore. So it's like a game like this where the triggers in the back and the PlayStation 4 controller are a little like the um, Xbox Ones. It, it kind of adds that feeling to a shooter. So I, I give it to the PlayStation that one. There you go, Sony. A fight stick. On a fight stick, when you actually learn the fight stick completely, your fighting game dynamics change so much. The cancels, the dashes, the wave dashes, the triangle jumps. So I think the fight, I think the fighting stick really revolutionizes the way you play. The colors of my org are black, white, and a touch of gold. When I first joined the org, all I did was wear all black. I was just like, cool, that's me right there. The white for me meant that I'm adding another element of my life to me. I'm trying to make a change, I'm making a switch now. And the gold usually represents royalty. You know, growing up younger, dark skin jokes, all this stuff. You go through life with low self-esteem because the world makes it that way. Gold is royalty. That means you have a purpose. That means you have a place. That means something about you is what stands out. First person shooters and Duel Links is like a, I'll say strategy, hard strategy game kind of sort of. And uh, first person shooter, those are my two dynamics right now. And fighting games, like the Yu-Gi-Oh card strategy. That's my big one right there. That, that's what I'm really focused on, especially since I joined the, uh, since the team recruited me on Yu-Gi-Oh. Shout out X Hunters. The fighting game community is huge. It's probably the biggest I've seen in years. So many people are so happy in sports. So fighting games is huge. Racing, there you go, I'll hit you. Racing, sorry. So this area is mainly about uh, just little pieces of my personality once more in the Amiibos and from other pops that I have up here too. So if you take a look, you'll see the Deadpool at the top because my favorite color is blue. You'll see like a bunch of Nintendo characters so you can tell I never really lost touch with my kid side. I will always collect these things the more I see them and that's the biggest thing about them. I, I, like, I like this generation of systems. The one thing I, I wish Nintendo would stop doing is discontinuing every little thing they make every year. The Wii came out, and then before I knew it, the Wii U. And then the Wii was obsolete. You might want to see if you could return that real quick. And then get a Switch, because... But I think we're good. We're in a, we're in a great space. I, in my opinion, they give the fans what they want. When the fans call on something, Nintendo's like, Okay, guys. That guy said he wants Mewtwo back. We're putting Mewtwo back in Super Smash Brothers. No if fans or buts about it, and then everybody on Twitter is like, yeah, Mewtwo, it's awesome. So Nintendo is, get a nod from me. I always support Nintendo. No, because cause PC gaming and stream, that stream console took, took whatever last shot of any other console just coming out of the woodworks for. Let the big three manage their stuff. Let Steam and PC do their thing. Let mobile games and the app stores do their thing. I think we have, I think we got it. We got it. Now we just need to play ball. Now we just need to win. Sega. Sega could jump in. I feel like if Sega came out with a Dreamcast 2, because the Dreamcast was great, it was phenomenal. It's at its time, Power Stone, Marvel vs. Capcom, it introduced 2K. Anybody was to try, like if they came out with a flagship Sonic game and said, hey, this is running on a new Unreal Engine, I'm bought in. I'm good. We could do it. Yes, shout out to my mom, number one lady in life. I love mama. Oh, um, little brother, my other siblings that live in North Carolina. My grandmother, my grandfather, my father's side of the family as well. Shout out my girlfriend, Kadian, my sister, my Mason brothers. I know I haven't seen my Mason brothers in a long time. Uh, my fraternity, definitely shout out to you guys. You guys helped me in a big way, all the brothers in there. And shout out to my core group of friends. My friend Shane, Douglas, Sherrod, Chad, friend Alan that I met at work. My frat brother, Marlon. PlayStation game. Mega Man Legends, PlayStation 1. Nintendo game. Super Mario World. No, Super Mario Sunshine. Nintendo GameCube. Xbox game. Halo 3. Xbox 360. Handheld system. 
Pokemon Silver, Game Boy Color. Will we see you at a Game Watch one day? Of course. Um, just let me know when. Awesome. <laughs> it was beautiful. Shout out to the, the Duel Links community, uh, DK. He created the Duel Links kind of competitive community on his own. He did something I wanted to do. He got first place in a Kaiba Cup on the very first year Duel Links came out. Just to explain real quick, Kaiba Cup is, back then it was a week long event where you had to play as many matches as humanly possible, which the first place people will swap like thousands of times because those people are no life in the game. Like there's people who literally played you on Duel Links for 36 hours, straight rank matches just to win and win and win and win and win and get to a point where they're like you know what I can go to sleep and I'll still be at number one he did it the first year and he took that notoriety and blew it up and he hired like uh, developers he uh, hired uh, web designers he quit his job and went straight twitch created content for people to watch created tournaments I appreciate him for that 